Hey everyone, I'm Dave Otero and I'm here with my buddy Ali Pinar, bass player from Cattle Decapitation and Cryptopsy. We're going to walk you through the full bass setup for the new Cattle album and take a special look at this badass new pedal, the Dark Glass Electronics X7. Alright, so let's talk through the signal path, starting of course with the instrument. Ollie played Spectre basses, and for this album we chose to use his Spectre Euro 5 LX bass. Spectre basses have a unique sound, and I would describe it as kind of uniquely modern. They can be really aggressive sounding. Spectre seem to be really well balanced across all the strings and across the entire fretboard. This particular instrument has a crazy high output. Uh, it's loaded with the EMG setup and it's Spectre's tone pump circuitry which uh, one provides a lot of gain and a pretty wide spectral image as far as you know there's lots of stuff going on up top uh, as well as like a really thick bottom a very sonically dispersed sound one tricky thing with this bass in particular is the tone controls don't have a center point typically uh, for a bass active or passive i'd prefer to record it flat if possible with maybe only making small changes uh, using the uh, built-in EQ section, tone shaping section, but there's not really an option for that with a Spectre So we kind of started with everything up and then modified a bit from there I don't you know, it's like with most bases you pick up an active bass and there's a bunch of knobs and you're like Well, this one makes this sound this one makes this sound you never really know what you're doing honestly <laughs> So you just kind of play around with it till it sounds good. Obviously volume is all the way up I believe we had the pickups split uh, and then what I believe are just essentially like the low end and high end controls were just pulled down just a touch uh, really to kind of like back off gain wise and uh, give us a little more headroom feeding into the pedals which we'll get into in a bit. We're using these Ernie Ball regular slinky stainless steel strings. Uh, this is a four string set 105 to 50 and then he adds a 130 for the low string. I generally prefer stainless steel strings on bass for their aggressive attack that's still kind of like pleasing. Uh, and also just like really extended lows. We changed about once every two songs or so. It's always kind of a balance between, you know, keeping the flow going when you finally get nice and warmed up and hit a groove and keeping that tone fresh. So uh, it was kind of a judgment call after every song, we'd kind of see where we're at. And if we needed to change, sometimes we'd just change the two or three lowest strings if those got a lot of work. Sometimes we'd do a full pass, but we'd always start every day at very least with a with a completely fresh set that had settled in overnight, you know, get them stretched out, tuned up and get to work. We're going straight from the bass to the DI, uh, which is my Creation Audio Labs NW1. I really like this DI as far as it's, it really seems to be the cleanest and most accurate representation of the instrument. And the only setup that I've found where reamps can sound indistinguishable from the actual guitar tones. You can run, you can do a full loop, you know, record DIs immediately, switch some cables around and send it back through the amp. And side by side, they're, they're absolutely indecipherable from one another. Which I've never really been able to get that amount of transparency through a reamp process um, using any other DIs or any other reamp boxes. It can present some problems being it's a wall powered unit. You'd have to be aware of ground loops and uh, find the right combo between the ground lift options it gives you on the back of the device. But I've never had a situation where that wasn't solvable with uh, just some a being and, and trying some different combinations of, of ground lifts and maybe moving around to some different outlets. The DI portion of the NW1 gives you a balanced line out with a dedicated gain control, which allows you to bypass any preamp at all and go right into your conversion. And I think that's a large part of why it's able to sound so transparent and just avoid any coloration, uh, you know, another preamp circuit in the path is going to create. I took the balanced line out of the NW1 and fed it into uh, the Crane Song Spider line in, which removes most of the preamp circuitry and pretty much removes any coloration from that path. Once we capture the DI, we come back out of that box and feed through a couple of Ollie's dark glass pedals. The first being this B7K. Uh, it's definitely a bit road worn and uh, has been on Ollie's pedal board for a while. So it's well loved, uh, but it sounds great. We're kind of using this for our initial bass shaping for a little bit of gain, some edge, a bit of drive, which can also add some compression and really the first stage of, of our general tone that, that is present across the entire album. After that, we're running into the X7, which is an incredible new pedal. This one's a nice brand spanking new, all clean and everything. 
um, that uh, is really what we're using for our dirty tone. So we do we will have two tones on the album, and when cattle hits those shredding parts that are just pure fury, uh, open black metal chords that are just being ripped uh, by Josh and Bell. This guy gives us a little extra saturation, some fuzz on top. He could just sit there and rip away and it kind of blends in to more of like a, a wall of bass. It is actually still extremely clear and percussive, uh, but it does add this awesome layer of fuzz over everything and an extra level of aggression that could just really amp up the tones uh, for certain parts of the album. After that, we're feeding through my uh, trusty old Sans amp here that lives at the studio. Uh, just for a bit of that amp sound. So we're using no drive, the drive's all the way down. The blend is actually set at maybe 60% uh, and pretty conservative on the rest of the settings. Just again for that amp sound uh, to kill some of the fuzz directly out of the pedals. If we did track with this setup without a real amp, you know, we didn't have a, any speakers filtering out uh, some of that stuff that you normally wouldn't hear on the, on the top end from a distortion pedal. Uh, so this helps us kind of just get a bit of an amp sound. Rather than use the XLR output on the SANS amp, I took an instrument cable out and used my own DI, which I've always had better luck with, better tone with. In this case, that was my radial JDI duplex DI box, uh, and we fed that balance signal into the Phoenix Audio DRS-8. Again, this tone that we're talking about today and that we're about to show you, was what we tracked with. It may not end up being the final tone for the album. I may tweak settings a bit more, you know, but this kind of got us where we're going and gave us a vibe that we're able to build off of as we continue tracking. Let's have Ollie plug in, play some riffs, and dig into the tones. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that little peek behind the curtain for bass tracking on the new cattle album. I was hoping to specifically dig into the X7 pedal a little deeper, but with time constraints and a lot of stuff to do, we didn't really have the time for that before all I had to fly back to Canada. But you still got a pretty good overview of, you know, what is contributing to the tone along with the B7K and of course the bass driver. I'm really happy with everything so far. These obviously aren't finished tones nor a finished mix. Uh, but you're hearing exactly what we're hearing as we're tracking bass and if i'm as excited on this tone and how it fits in with everything else when i do get to the mix i can definitely see myself not even bothering with reamping or trying to get an actual amp on the album and just rolling with the sound that we capture during tracking we do plan on making another one of these videos covering the entire guitar setup so subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on that thanks for watching and catch you guys later Pinard? Pinard. Pinard? Pinard, but Pinard. Pinard? Pinard. Pinard? 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 Ali Pinard? Yeah. Pinard? Bass player? That was not very good, no. Pinard. 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 Pinard.
If you say Pinard. Pinard. <laughs>